Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, we're going to talk about SAP DME configuration. There are a lot of steps and transaction codes involved as you can see here. This can be quite complex or difficult to understand for first timers or for those of you who are trying to understand this for the first time. This video will focus more on one transaction code and that is C code DMEE. So we're going to focus on this because majority of the configurations happen here. This is where you're going to create your DME tree. We're going to create some sort of structure and format. We're going to map some details in the DME tree so that when you create the file output or the DME output, the necessary details, formatting, and structure is in the file. I will be using my blog post as the main visual aid for this tutorial. As always, I will leave the link down below so you can always refer to that for guidance. This video is going to be a bit more high level, especially for those of you who are encountering this or trying to understand this for the first time. But if you go to the blog post, there are additional details, extensive details actually that explain certain fields, why certain configurations are created in that manner, so on and so forth. Again, this video is going to be a bit more high level, but if you want more detail, you can always go to the blog post. Also, feel free to comment down below if you have some questions or send me an email. This tutorial, we're going to try to visualize the file output, an XML file. So this means throughout our configurations, we're going to understand that if we do this type of configuration, this will be the corresponding file output. So at least we have some sort of comparison going on and we understand what happens when we do a certain configuration. This is the blog post and I'm just going to zoom you in. We're going to start off with an overview just so we're organized with the discussion. First, we're going to discuss the configuration and visualization. So the creation of the DME tree, its properties, as well as the nodes. Towards the end, I will show you a final output. So what is the XML file going to look like once generated? And lastly, in the blog post, I have included additional information. So for those complex or difficult fields that are not straightforward in terms of explanation or that need more in-depth explanation, I have included some details down below. First off, we're going to start with the configuration and visualization. So again, the transaction code is DMEE and we're going to enter the tree type and the format tree. So in this example, since we're trying to create a payment medium output, we indicated PayM as the tree type. For the format tree, simply put in the name of your tree. Then we're going to click the create button over here. Once you click on that button, you should be seeing this type of pop-up. It's asking what kind of file would you like to create with your DMEE format. In this scenario, we're trying to create an XML file. So click on the XML file over here and you will be directed to the next screen. So this is what it looks like. Basically, you have the DMEE tree properties over here on the left hand side. And towards the right hand side of the screen, you see a couple of tabs and a couple of fields that are present. The first tab that you will see is called the administrative data tab. And overall, we're trying to fill in the DME tree properties before we create the nodes. In the first tab, you can simply put in your description. So I entered a short description here. For the documentation, you can leave that blank. It's not going to cause a hard error when you try to trigger the payment medium output. You can leave it blank for the meantime. Next, we're going to click on the Format Attributes tab and it's going to look something like this. In this example, I indicated FPM underscore SEPA as the format specification structure. And this can be quite difficult to understand for the first time. But basically, the purpose of this is 
later on, I can use this structure, the corresponding components and fields later on when I want to do some mapping for format purposes. So the keyword here is format and mapping. Over here, I have a screenshot of this structure. So here is FPM underscore SAPA structure and we have a couple of components or fields that are available for use in terms of our payment medium. So we have the XML namespace of data medium as well as the schema. It's quite technical for now, but later on we'll see how we're able to use this. For the print accompanying sheet, we're trying to we're trying to focus on a scenario that's quite simple and easy to understand. So for now, we're going to select the without accompanying sheet. But if you want more details on this, I did link an SAP note on this. You can click on this one. Moving on to the next tab, levels. Here you will see a couple of numbers here. So level 0, 1, 2 and the repetition factor. It can be quite intimidating because they're all numbers and at first glance you might not know what it means. But in my personal words, you can simply think of it as how many times, meaning the repetition factor over here, the information can be repeated per level. So in this case, for level zero, that means that, okay, the data specified in level zero, if I declare it to be level zero, it means it can repeat multiple times. For level one, if I declare something as level one, it means that it can only repeat once. For level two, the same as level zero, it can repeat multiple times. I did include a more in-depth explanation on this. You can always refer to this. I included a simple example as well as a more complex example. You can read through this, but for this video, we're going to skip that. Then we're going to click on the next tab called sort or key fields. Basically for this, you need to be able to specify what type of information by form of a structure and field you can find per level. So let's refer to this screenshot over here. I indicated structure FPH with a couple of fields over here, and I specified them as level 2. So what does this mean? Let's focus on this area. It means that, let's say, this data, FPH structure field doc 1R denoting a payment reference. It means that since I specified it to be level 2, we can expect multiple payment references to occur in one output file. I hope you get the connection because we, we declared level 2 as 99999 as you can see and this means that this type of field or data can occur a lot of times. So if I specify this to be level 1, it means it's going to occur one time only. For the checkboxes over here, if you select the key field, it means that any change in the value tells SAP that the level has ended. If the payment reference value changes and you selected key field, that means that, okay, SAP, this is the end of the level, if that makes any sense. And for the no sorting field checkbox, if you tick on that, self-explanatory, it means that there will be no sorting whatsoever for that field. Moving on to the last tab, which is file data. Here you need to specify which characters you want or do not want to allow. In this example, I selected do not allow these characters and simply enter the characters over here in the field. So this basically sums up the tabs that you need to fill up for the DME tree properties. And now we're going to move forward to creating our nodes. As a refresher or additional guidance, you can click on Extras and Node Legend to see the different type of node types available. So here we see Element, XML Attribute, Technical Node, Atom, so on and so forth. And you can always double click on the I icon for information on each node type. It's quite technical when you read the, the information from SAP, but I did add some personal keywords per node. You can refer to this table below.
So for example, an element, I simply associated it with an XML tag. For XML attribute, I associated it with the details inside an XML tag. Just for alignment, this is a tag and an XML has these types of tags in a file. We have tag and this slash indicates that this is the end of the tag. So any sort of information, for example, I added some characters over here. It means that these characters correspond to this tag. And another example is by colors. So this is colors and we have the end colors tag over here. And we have a couple of tags within the colors. So this means that you can think of it as a grouping, if that makes any sense. Within the colors grouping, we have color one and color two. Basically, the detail for color one is black and the detail for color two is blue. Okay, when I mean by element, let's say that this is our element. So let me just type it here. The tag here is our element. And when I say XML attribute, it's possible that we have some sort of color detail over here. And this means that any sort of value, for example, this is just for example purposes, this type of value or detail within a tag corresponds to an XML attribute. For technical notes, I did mention that this won't show up in the XML file as a tag whatsoever or any detail. You won't expect that to be in the file output, but you can utilize it in such a way that you can define your exit modules or your custom function modules there. You can even store values from other nodes here. For an atom, this is our key node to do our mapping. So in terms of the mapping rule, you can basically say that this atom can pull data from a certain field. In this case, let's say that we have field 1 and field 2. Field 1 is, let's say, AA. Field 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So in terms of the atom, this will be atom 1. This will be atom 2. Two, and you can declare it in our DME tree. If you want this information to be concatenated, for example, AA1234, you can do so as well through atoms. And it will output in a single line or within a tag. It depends on how you set it up. Moving forward, we're going to try to create our nodes now. So in the DME tree properties, right click on that and select create element. So you should now have this type of screen where you have new element and some blank fields to the right. Now let's look at our XML file. Our scenario says that, okay, we want to be able to show the document tags in the output file. So this is our sample output file and we want to output document tags over here. Let's say that we want to make sure that it only occurs once. If that is the case, then simply enter the following details. So the name here will be the one that outputs in the file output. So document, you put it here. If it has to be lowercase, then make sure this is lowercase. Then you can add your short description and indicate your level. We indicated level one because from our levels configuration a while ago, we said that we only want this to occur once. So we indicate one. For our mapping procedure, we leave it as no mapping. Why? Because it is just a tag that we want to output. We're not mapping this from any structure or field. Now let us consider the scenario where we need to put extra details inside the document tag. So if you remember, we added extra details here. In this example, I'll zoom you guys in. We have some details within the document tag. So we see XML and S and XSI. So this and this. What does this mean? It corresponds to an XML attribute. So we have two XML attributes that we need to declare. One is for XML and S and one is for XSI. So we're going to right click on the 
a document and select create attribute. You should have this screen below, XML attribute, and let's proceed to create XML attribute 1 for XMLNS. We're going to add the following details, such as the name, since it's lowercase, we just, we did not put any capital letter whatsoever. We added a short description, and for the mapping procedure, we selected own a mapping or atoms. So going back to our atoms, we recall that we're trying to map it to output a certain value. Next, we're going to create XML attribute 2. Let's try to create the main attributes first. It's the same procedure. You right-click on the document, create attribute, and follow the same procedure. So it's going to look something like this. You have both, and the mapping procedure is atoms. By now, our output would look something like this. So we have document and the XML attributes over here in red. So XML and S and the XSI, according to how we defined it. What's missing is, of course, the details for each attribute over here. So this means that we want to be able to enter this type of value or text within these XML attributes. So one thing that you can do is to right-click on the attribute and create atom. You'll have something like this. So we have the new atom over here. We're going to start off with XML attribute 1 and... We're trying to copy the XML file details, right? And so we're entering the details below. So we have ISO, ISO details, Atom for the short description. We specified the length. And this time, the mapping procedure will be a constant. Why? Because we're expecting that these values will not change. It's always the same. So it's constant. In this case, we're okay with the first tab and you might be wondering how I ended up with length 70. So going back to our structure, fbm underscore sepa, if you remember from our DME properties, if we go back to this component XML and S, it has a length of 70. So I simply entered the same value there. We're going to click on the next tab called source. We're still in the first attribute and the atom. And we're going to copy paste this constant over here. So we're basically saying that always output this value or this constant text. If you need this value to be present all the time, this is where you can go to the conditions tab over here and enter the same arguments over here. This is basically saying that make sure it's present all the time. For additional information, I did include some sort of helpful tips. For example, arg11, which is this column, corresponds to the structure or reference value. So in this case, it's fpm underscore sepa. For argument 1-2, it's xml and s, so we're talking about the field value. Going back to our structure, we're talking about this component, so we indicated it over here. For the type, 1 for constant value, 2 for field in source structure, 3 for reference ID. So in this screenshot, we're talking about a structure and its corresponding field, so we input 2, and so on and so forth. Next, we're going to create XML attribute 2. This time, we're following the details mentioned here. So it's the same approach. We have constant as the mapping procedure and 70 as the length. This is for XMLNS XSI attribute. Then we're going to click on the next tab source, similar to what we did a while ago. And we copy pasted this value over here. So we're done with the XML attributes in the document tab. We're done with this. Our output should have the details as seen here. We're going to take our scenario up a notch. And let's consider that we need to include payment details as seen in the XML file below. So this means that we need to add the payment details tags in our tree. 
as you can see here highlighted in green same approach we're gonna right click on the document element node over here and select create element instead of same level please indicate it as sub node we're trying to create a structure that says we have document here but we're trying to create a sub node so that's payment so that's payment details and payment details so it is a sub node it's a node within this node which is why we're using this option so you should now have a sub node element under document i don't know if you guys notice but there's an indention that's going on we have the the second element or the sub node a little a little to the right we have our payment details here so again since this is just a tag that we want to output we're using no mapping and the rest of the other tabs you can leave it blank because we don't need to use it by now you should have created the payment details tag within the document tag so we have created this structure this time it's not we're not yet done of course we need to populate some details so we need to add some information within the payment details so in this case if we look at the xml file over here i zoom you guys in we see that there are information such as company code house bank bank account number currency amount payment reference so on and so forth so for this example recall that we can create the xml tags accordingly as elements so this time we're going to create elements again but as sub nodes to payment details so we're saying that within the payment details we have more information just use the space bar for this so let's say company code and so on and so forth so we need to enter the details over here this time remember that for this we need to add some sort of value for example company code let's say it's company code 1222 this is the company code it's trying to output a detail within the tag so this means that this has a mapping if that makes any sense i have here a summary table so these are the payment details needed according to our requirements and we have the information listed below i have here the name of the tag what should be seen in the xml file and we have the corresponding sap structures and the corresponding fields so this is like a nice table you can always refer to when we're trying to create the dme tree it's like a summary table in terms of the mapping okay we know that for company code we're getting it from structure fah and field zbukr at this point you can now create different tags in the dme tree and map them to the existing essay structures so i added a couple of screenshots below so you can uh, visualize so in this case we see structure fah zbukr for the paying company code we see that there's a length and then there's a data type similar to house bank we have the field or the component the data type and the length for reference to payment document we have the field the data type and the length of 24 so on and so forth including the last which is the account number of the bank so we have here the field again the data type and the length so now that we visualize that okay we're, we're pulling details from the structure this field it has this length we can now create the sub node element for payment details same procedure right click on payment details create element and select as sub node then we're going to enter the details as seen below we're going to start off with company code here we entered the name we want to output company code without a space so we did not Put a space whatsoever in the name for the short description we entered any sort of description that is helpful for us the length we follow the structure the type we follow the character and the level is two why is that because again 
we're expecting that this type of information or this data, this detail can repeat multiple times. And for the mapping procedure, it's going to be structure field. Why? Because we know that we can map this tag or this element to a structure field, meaning what we discussed earlier. The, the table, so structure FKH, ZBUKR, and we can see it over here as well. So since we declared it as a mapping procedure of structure field, we can click on the source tab because we need to indicate, okay, it's a structure field, but what is the source? Here you can specify the structure and the field name as indicated. And we do the same for the other details. So in the next node, we create same level this time because we're talking about the same level. If we have, let's say, house bank over here, it's basically the same level as company code. So we're not creating like a sub node and we follow the same approach. So structure field, we enter the source. We basically follow the same process of creating an element at the same level. And below is a continuation for a bank account. We enter the structure, FPHX, and the field name. Now we're going to move on to amount. So you can see that we've created a lot of these elements already. We have the company code, house bank, bank account, pay name, payment reference, currency, amount. And I just wanted to add this special screenshot because you might notice that I indicated length 10 instead of the one that was specified in the structure. If that's the case, uh, I entered length 10 because you can, at the end of the day, consider it as a limitation measure to keep the amount value to 10 digits only. For the type, I set it to numeric. It depends on what type of amount you're trying to output. Same approach, we click on structure field as the mapping procedure and we enter the structure and field name. So finally, we're complete with the DME tree. We basically created this DME tree structure. We mapped our nodes to the structure and fields. We're finally complete with it. This simple scenario or example. If you have not saved your creation yet, please make sure to hit the save button and save all of your changes in a transport request. We're done with the basic run through of how to create your DME tree. And now we have our final output and it looks something like this. So from this screenshot, we see some elements over here and the XML output shows the following. So we have document, the document tag. It's only, it only occurs once in the output file. We have our XML attributes over here. We have our sub nodes or our tags elements. So we have payment details over here and a bunch of other details within the payment details tag, such as company code, house bank, bank account, paying name, payment reference, so on and so forth. So if we were to compare it to our DME tree, I did include a screenshot. It's just so you guys are able to compare the screenshot much easier. And finally, if you want to copy the XML content, you can do so over here. It's uh, stated in this tiny scrolling box below. <laughs> now we have our additional information. This video is getting quite long, so I'm going to leave it at that. Basically, we were able to compare our DME tree configuration with the output or the XML file output. And the configuration just deals with this type of approach. So if you, if you need to visualize it, you have this on the right hand side. For the additional information, feel free to browse through it. It's quite extensive. I did include some format tree names, structure format reminders in OBPM1, the XSLT program for post-processing, reference ID of node, and reference to another node exists. I included an example over here. And we, I did include some technical nodes example, the usage over here, also step-by-step. -step. Some additional details on the formatting of the XML and S. And what you need to do, some additional uh, configurations if needed. The structure of the DME file and SAP example. 
is also available. I did include some additional details here for flat file approach. That's it for this video. I really, really hope that you guys learned from this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.